previously on True Anon. Communism is definitely not a hammer. <laughs> no. Communism is a YouTuber, which we use to crush our enemies. <laughs> we should talk a little bit about Ghazi, who's like a very odd figure and kind of key to this entire story. There is no Black Hammer without Ghazi, and I would say there's pretty much no Ghazi without Black Hammer either. He's the commander-in-chief of the Black Hammer organization, which is their official name. He's not a revolutionary. He's not the next Mao. He's not the next Fanon or whatever. He is a fucking YouTuber. What is Black Hammer? When did it start? So Ghazi actually started Black Hammer in February of 2019. And there actually isn't a ton of evidence that they believe in really much of anything. It seems like it started first as like a Black Power organization sort of modeled directly after Uhuru. It's sort of like a mishmash of J. Sakai's book, uh, Settlers, very sort of half-read Mao. So Black Hammer organization exists to take land back for all colonized people worldwide. I get why people would join this organization. Anyways, we're talking about Hammer City, babe. Yeah, Hammer City. This got a lot of buzz on the internet. Hammer City yes. was kind of a chaz. Hammer City was mountain chaz. The, the tagline for it was... No colonizers, no cops, no corona. Hammer City actually raised $100,000 from this. Black Hammer never bought the land. Yeah, I think people just figured that it kind of like fizzled out. Well, they did put out some good articles about Cyberpunk 2077. So Black Hammer's all living together. Ghazi has been manipulating, threatening, and abusing members for who knows how long. The Black Hammer live stream that I watched last night was, I would say, the most Jim Jones type thing I've ever seen. It's just like a whole sadistic show. It's like really giving me the creeps. So there is a chance that Black Hammer retaliates against us after this, and I will do anything to protect you. The only thing that can defeat their brand is a more powerful brand. Breaking news, Joe Biden has died. That would be so sad. sad. I was like, I couldn't even say it with a straight face. Honestly, I'll tell you this right now. If Joe Biden dies, I'll kill myself. Don't say so that. I can be, he can be my president. You get to serve out the rest of your term in heaven. Mm. And I want him, I want to see what heaven's like under Biden. Like you become president of heaven? Yeah, Wait, is God you, president of heaven? No, God is kind of like the, it's a constitutional monarchy kind of thing. So God's king, just like the king. Of uh, sorry, correction. God's the queen. Uh so you think God, so does God, let me ask you this. God is a woman. Does God have a- Ariana Grande, everyone does, knows that. Does God have large- Who has? Breasts. No. Okay, so God has small titties? Yeah. That's crazy. No. Does God have a fat ass? Absolutely. Does God have a dope personality? I think so. Does God have a fire ass pussy? I'm pleading the fifth. <laughs> Hello, Liz. Hello, Brace. Do you notice anything different about me? Yeah, you dyed your hair. You yes, bleached it. I did, yeah. And That's I'm wearing cool. a chain choker. Yeah, just the tips. I like that, little mm -hmm. bleach tips. Well, it's mostly tip. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's a sleeveless shirt I'm wearing. Yeah, you're going for the full smash mouth. Somebody. Mm -hmm. And you can see my side boob. What is side boob? It's the side of your boob? Side boob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's right there in the name. It That's says cool. what it is. What's the deal with it? It's you, the side of it. There's a name for that? Yeah, it's called side boob. Is there like side? Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm Liz. My name is Brace. And of course, we are joined by producer Young Chopsky. And the reason things like a bomb personality and a dope ass are on my mind is because while Liz has been out of town, I have been watching a lot of YouTube videos. <laughs> Wait, the podcast is called True Anon. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Oh, who cares about that? Okay. So wait, wait you're watching YouTube's? I, I've been red pilled. Okay. And I gotta tell you this, I'm a high worth individual. You are. And I've been taught to ask you this. Oh, okay. What are you bringing to the table? First of all. What is it? Bomb ass? Bomb okay, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's a, no. Okay. Wow. Cool. I forgot it it's already. It's a dope ass. Wait, okay. I can't remember what it is either. It's a dope ass. Yeah. 
And a bomb personality. Yes, definitely. We don't have to mention the, the third one. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's other ones too. Um, wait. Well, yeah. Yeah. There's other ones too. We don't have to get into those. So, okay. You're bringing those to the table. But what are you like? What are the intangibles you're bringing? Um, charisma. Ooh. Okay. Um, elegance. Ah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, discretion. Oh, my oh, very important. Very important. You know what I've been Low doing? Low-key, no one knows the art of discretion anymore. No. I, and you know what? I've actually had to learn that. Fact, every time I, I, I make a new... high-key, actually. Every time I make a new male friend, mm. which I do a lot, yeah, which seek is them cool. out, you know? It's good to have your boys. What you got to do is you got to bring an NDA. If you no, hang out with a guy one-on-one, on one, discretion. don't no. give any explanation. Be just like, hey, bro, can you sign this real mm. quick? <laughs> and he's like, what, what yeah. for? He's like, oh, don't worry about yeah. it. Just sign it. Yeah. Because... Then it's just signing the homie code. A, well, no, a little part of him is gonna be like, "Are we on a date?" Mm. And like, that's that, good. You gotta, you gotta introduce. Advantage. Yeah, that little, you know, gives you some edge you in do. the combo. You have tactical advantage there. Absolutely. That's 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 the thing. Any male listeners out there, you always gotta make <laughs> any guys you hang out with be like, "Wait, are we? Does he think we're gonna hook up?" Yeah, that's good. You got them on the. That brings good energy to the friendship too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's you know what. Honestly, he signs the NDA. You can do whatever you want. Absolutely. So it's a win-win, really. Yeah, you can tell if you killed somebody. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit of business to talk about. Yes. Um, you're fired. No. Stop looking at the screen. Sorry, I, I was just reading what the contract says. Um, <laughs> couple business. Uh, couple couple business. business. Oh, yeah, we do, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, everyone, hello. Hello. We are going on tour. We're not going to, I'm not going to let Brace read any of the tour dates hmm. because, because at least for me, I, I can't handle it. It takes too long. Uh huh. But I don't know. Did we announce it on the podcast that we added the two dates? We added a second date in LA. We added a second date in San Francisco. Yes. We're going on a lot of dates. Um, so many dates actually that I have to no, look up. No, please don't look them up. Wow, cool. So you are just looking at me <laughs> pleadingly like I would give the dates of the actual shows. So, okay, and I don't have them in front of me, quite frankly. I don't, and I'm wasting time right now. Look, I'm just literally cycling between Black Hammer links on my computer you know that thinking got, that the dates all, will come up. First of all, spoiler alert. Yeah. Second of all, you know you could just stop talking and Young Chomsky here could edit it out. Mm. Okay, I got it. So, on 11-03-2022 at the Union Transfer. Oh, no. Why do you uh, have to say it like this? We, we, that's not a new show, but we actually, that's like a show, and we still have tickets available for that. Uh, DC, they're almost sold out. Um, so, so, you want me to just talk about the shows that we added? Oh, my God. Let's take this all over. This is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. Uh, no, so, no. No, 11, please. 16, 2022 at the Terragram Ballroom. Oh my God, why do you do that? That is the 16th of November of this year. Terragram Ballroom this is, is so true on second show at it. And uh, second Portland show is almost sold out. Oh. It's on the this 22nd. Is why people say that we're boomers. And then the last show of I the think tour. Boomers are better on the at this. 26th. Speaking of boomer, there's going to be a guy who's going to go boom Don't. at that show. <laughs> In the style of Bataclan. You gotta stop making At- this. Stop <laughs> Bataclaning. I already and texted you about this. Yes, you did. And you actually both warned me verbally in person. I forgot because you were being mean to me. But we are also doing a show, a second San Francisco show on November 26th. Yeah, the last show of the tour. Last show of the tour. Still our tickets available to that. The other one is sold out. And that one will be, let me tell you, a blast. <laughs> Oh, wait, one last thing before we start. I want to give a little shout out to one of our long time, I think really, really long time listeners, um, Alicia Humphrey, who is out in, I believe, Oklahoma. She's uh, working to unionize Starbucks and she wrote a piece in Jacobin about it. And we're going to link to it in the show notes. And I just want to say congrats to Alicia. Good job, baby doll. And... No, we're just, we're really excited. Yeah. Thanks for listening. And we support you and we support all your union efforts. Uh, another shout out we actually have to give. This is Shout Out Central. This we is, never do that. We never do shout outs. And you know what? 
Anyone getting ideas out there? We'll never do them again. Yeah, fuck you. I'm never talking about you. Um, shout out to the to the to the boy Charlie, aka that styled who? ape on Twitter. Oh, um, who uh, of course long time correspondent to the show on Black Hammer, uh, and who is who has been again, very spoiler alert. Dude, it's in the episode description. Um, but we will also be linking to his podcast, Most Controversial, uh, in the show notes as well. So this is Link Central. Yeah, we got links all over the place. Mm-hmm. What is this called? This is this is less like a podcast and almost more like a golf course. Oh, that was terrible. For Christ's sake. Why not a hot dog stand? That's sausages that are links. Do they call them links? No. Okay. Actually, I don't know. So Or a vintage fur store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, don't know what that means. Oh, cuff, cuff, no? No, what? lynx, the oh, animal. Oh, the animal. Oh, my yeah. God. So today, actually, we're going to be talking about the most dangerous game of all, mm. human. Um, do you recall last time we did a Black Hammer episode? No, but I did listen to it again Uh huh. because I forgot about what we talked about. You know, it was like a year ago. I did not know that. Yeah. And I told you I was- Almost a year ago to the day, I believe. Yeah. And we talked about, I think we gave some warnings in that, that this organization was, the future was not looking bright for No, that something bad was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Well, dear listeners, something bad has happened. Something really bad happened. In fact, someone died. Yeah. So I guess let's, let's start from. Let's rewind. Yeah. From, well, how far should we rewind? Well, let's rewind to July 19th. Okay. Actually, let's rewind a little further. Oh, Okay. So, let's listeners out, for out there. If you have not heard our last Black Hammer episode, you should listen to that now. You know what? We're going to link to it in the show notes. <laughs> we'll link to that one in the show notes too. You know what? Maybe we'll link to a couple other episodes. Maybe if we feel we'll like link to it. whatever I want. Yeah, exactly. You know, maybe I'll link to my Amazon wish list. Oh my god! Um, which actually, guys, should, guys shouldn't have those. Yeah. What do you? What's on there? Uh, I haven't made it yet. Um, Switch accessories. Oh my god! For Nintendo Switch. Uh, so Black Hammer is a, Liz, can you read this? Well, they are, they call themselves the baddest anti-colonial organization on the planet. I would be kind of inclined to agree that they're the baddest. (laughs) As in the worst. Yes. Yes. Anti-colonial organization on the planet. They are a group that is at various times described as an organization a party, and I think more commonly now as a cult Mm. that was started around a failed fashion blogger, failed, although semi-successful, YouTuber uh, and former African People's Socialist Party member, Ghazi Kodo, who collected some individuals around him and basically harangued them, harassed them, uh, and uh, as we found out, did much worse things to them for a number of years, raised a bunch of money to, well, we'll get more into that later, um, and wound his way along with uh, several organization members to a suburb of Atlanta where he is now in the county jail. Yes. So Tuesday, July 19th, police from Fayetteville, Mm -hmm. which is like outside of Atlanta, Fayetteville, Georgia, descended on this home in a little sleepy subdivision of Woodbine. Uh, Their caller told the police that he was kidnapped. Mm -hmm. The police answer, who kidnapped you? The caller, Black Hammer. So the caller says to the police that he'd been picked up by Black Hammer at a train station, like a local train station, and that multiple kids and himself were locked in a garage with chains, like chained up, and that they were, you know, basically under armed guard, like being held hostage at mm-hmm. gunpoint. He basically asked the police to check the garage and says, I could die at any second. So the police come, and because this is a hostage situation, they actually bring the SWAT team. Yeah. So they block off the street, surround the house, and in fact, they actually see one of the Black Hammer members walking the little dog. I think it's Kino that they see. Mm. Uh, walking, a, walking, I guess, the Black Hammer dog. They stop him. Uh, I think they detain him and he's later arrested. Uh, they, get, they use megaphones to call everybody else outside of the house. There's nine members now on the sidewalk. One of them, not Gazi, tells the police that there's actually a 10th person inside of the house. 
So this is where the accounts between Black Hammer and the Fayetteville Police Department really start to diverge. Yeah. So what Fayetteville says happens, the, the, the police, is that they actually sent a robot inside of the house. Yeah, like a tiny little, like a little, what are they called? What's the little vacuum robot called? Roomba. Like a, a Roomba? Yeah, like a little Roomba. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me, it's just a Roomba with a GoPro that you can it control with Xbox. It would be psycho Xbox. if they sent in one of the, like, those crazy, like, spider dogs the, that yeah. the internet freaks out about, I like, every out four about months. Those. I just don't want well, I know, but everyone asks that they've never seen them before, and it's I like, know. you have seen these before. I, since the first time I saw those fucking con- since the first time I saw those robot dogs, I've been killing regular dogs yeah. to prepare myself for what sure. actually pulling the trigger when I see one of the cyber dogs. Anyways, um, they send the dog in. The dog either hears a gunshot or finds the, uh, the, the victim. You're talking about the robot. The robot does. Excuse yeah. me, not the dog. <laughs> yes. Uh, the robot, uh, I believe, hears the gunshot, and that prompts the discovery of the body of a guy named Amonti A.P. Adams, mm. who is dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Adams was either 18 or 19. Uh, different accounts say different things. Uh, and he was the Minister of Defense for Black Hammer. Yeah, we'll get into some of that. Yeah, at, while this is all going on, Ghazi, uh, the leader of Black Hammer, the charismatic leader of Black Hammer, uh, is on the street live streaming basically the whole thing. Um, there, I guess he had a YouTube video that was like a five-second clip of him being like, the feds are surrounding my house. Yes. But then I think he kind of figured out what was happening, stopped the clip. Yeah. And then once he had gathered himself, gets back on Facebook, and it's about like a 26, 27-minute live stream. Um, you know, he's basically just saying, like, this is all great attention. This yeah. is going to be great for the hammer cause. It's unclear if he knows that the kid killed himself or had been killed. We'll get into that. Um, but he basically says more media, more followers, more, you know, advancement work, more movement, more greatness. Yeah. It's, it's you know, I think him going live at that moment yeah. is, and, and the way that he talks and acts like while he's doing that is so emblematic of just like how Black Hammer functions, which is in a large part as basically a vehicle for Ghazi Koto to talk on live streams or YouTube videos. Yeah, absolutely. And now you have watched a lot of his live streams. I have probably watched. I met a guy at a poker night uh, a you few weeks poker? ago. I did that night. Do you uh, play poker well? I did that night. Did you? I did. I did indeed, Liz. Interesting. Yeah. Why? Would you care for a hand? Yeah, we should play poker. A casual game? Yeah, absolutely. Perhaps. Wait, what do people bet in... Well, we had to play the most dangerous game. Or I well, do. Perhaps you can. I can bet you a night with my wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Uh, what? What, dude? Oh, come on! I've seen Don't her. Don't say that in front of her. <laughs> okay. Don't back worry, Miss Radajowski. It's all good. <laughs> oh, so, newly divorced. I saw. Believe or, me. Actually, not signed, but filed. Yes, I was there. Legally separated. I know. And okay. well, she's not alone. Let's say that. <laughs> Uh, so Ghazi, so Ghazi basically, I mean, I, I've watched so many of his live streams and the guy I met at the poker night, actually, I, I thought I was big shit for doing that. This guy also watched them. And not only did he Dude, watch you the same two are live the streams, only people that have watched so it. Black Hammer, and I don't want to get too all over the place, but if you listen to our last episode, this is contextualized. Um, Black Hammer had a reparations core yes. who would do Twitch streams where they played uh, modern warfare war zone. And uh, talked about uh, being white uh, in a Black Hammer type manner. Mm. And there was often like zero other viewers or there was like one or two other viewers who I assumed were other members of Black Hammer. Little did I know this man that I'd be playing poker with. Same thing. Really? Yeah. He was, he, he was the other guy watching them. That's very weird. I know. So basically, Ghazi is like a media guy through and through. Unfortunately, there's one place that you can't live stream, Liz. That's jail. <laughs> yeah. Because he gets sent there uh, along with the 21-year-old Xavier Russian, a.k.a. Kino. And Gazi faces some pretty extraordinary charges. Immediately, I just wanted to say, not the only Russian in this story. Mm-hmm. Oh, which wow. I, That's, I'm really sorry about that. No, no, no. Apology refused because it was good. No, Gazi's facing like, uh, I don't know, seven charges. Aggravated sodomy, which is a very weird charge. 
uh, aggravated assault, or name of a charge, I mean, criminal gang activity, false imprisonment, kidnapping. So the aggravated sodomy charge, uh, I had this explained to me by a few different people, is basically because of some technicality or quirk with, I believe, Georgia law, mm. a standing for a rape charge there. So he's basically been charged with two counts of aggravated rape. I do think, yeah, there's a, there's several of these counts are doubled, um, and I'm not exactly sure the reasoning of that. So a warrant obtained by W.F. Thomas at the Daily Dot uh, actually says that from the Fayetteville Police Department, says that Ghazi had a couple of members, or at least two other members, heard two other members into the garage at gunpoint and guard them. Mm -hmm. So that's likely where the caller came from. Uh, quote, Fayetteville police in the warrant say that Kozo anally raped at least one person at gunpoint. Ugh. Exactly. So I've heard unverified, and I want to be clear here, unverified rumors mm. that AP was one of the people holding others at gunpoint and possibly that he had been present when Ghazi had raped the other man. Yeah, so now Ghazi and Kino are just, they're still in Fayetteville County Jail. Yes, and the thing, <laughs> Ghazi has released some statements, which I, I guess I can read now. Sure. Joe Biden's liberal FBI has invaded Georgia. Why? Biden has sent the FBI to Atlanta to attack and destroy the Black Hammer movement that was born in ATL, created by me when I was homeless, to serve the homeless. Joe Biden is attacking us to steal and seal the primary election and the 2024 presidential election. Everyone knows Georgia went blue in 2020 because of Atlanta. Black Hammer has been dedicated going door to door to stop ATL from falling prey to the liberal agenda because we know a liberal controlled state is poison to the success of a black city. America used to sparkle with black meccas. Where are they all now? Harlem was destroyed by a liberal New York. Detroit destroyed by a liberal Michigan. Chicago destroyed by a liberal Illinois. Compton destroyed by a liberal California. St. Louis by Missouri, which I don't know if Missouri is the most liberal state legislature. And the list goes on and on. A black city's worst enemy is a blue state, history shows. Atlanta is the last great black mecca, and it thrives because it's nestled in a red state protected by conservative values like small government, importance of family, and independence. If Atlanta doesn't go red, it's dead. Look at what Georgia going blue in 2020 has done so far. Crime has skyrocketed, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he says, this was the message Black Hammer was bringing to Atlanta and to the people, and this is why Joe Biden has sicked his dogs on us. With free food, clothes, and resources, the word of our Lord and Savior, Black Hammer, it's written a little weird. This is why Biden slicked his FBI from D.C. on us. This is why they have killed and jailed us right before the primary election to continue the enslavement of the black vote under the Democratic Party. So that is a hell of a statement to make. And they called it, I believe, a statement from Fayetteville County Jail. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. Black Hammer released a response as an organization as well where they compared Ghazi to uh, Marcus Garvey. Yeah. Which is, you know, clearly an apropos comparison. Yes. Yeah. And the Black Panthers, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. I mean, we should say that the last episode we did on Black Hammer really focused on, I would say, like the kind of failed promise and scam of Hammer City and that the, the rise and fall of Hammer City and the kind of kids that were getting sucked into that and why. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it seems that in the year since we did that episode, like you mentioned kind of from Ghazi's statement here, is that he and the Black Hammer Org had taken a new route to recruiting members, which was basically just like recruiting homeless kids and drug addicts off the street. Yeah. I mean, it's actually really pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. Because it does seem like like the caller, the guy, the guy who had, um, you know, who had, I guess, instigated the police coming, who does seem to have actually been padlocked into that garage. Uh, was a homeless person that they had picked up from a train station. Seems like there are several other members. I believe AP might have been in, mm. in that situation as well. By the way, Ghazi is in his mid-30s. I think yeah. he's 36. Yeah. AP is 18 years old. Yeah. A lot of, I mean, Black There's Hammer is- There's some underage kids in there too. Yes. So Ghazi has also adopted, not legally, so I guess actually he hasn't mm. adopted Anyone. In name only. He has taken under his wing a 16-year-old kid who is now in jail, I believe mm. because of Ghazi. Ghazi gave him a rifle and, uh, you know, is saying that he's his son. Uh, Ghazi refers to himself as his, the kid's mother. 
Um, you know, it's it's very weird stuff. I believe he also says that AP was also his son. So I don't know if he's actually trying to like kind of make it seem like these people are actually members of his family or that there's adopted kids or not, but like they're not related to him in any way and he's not legally adopted either. They're teenage boys he picked up off the street that were living in his house. Yeah. The poli- so Black Hammer says, Ghazi says, and I want everyone to keep in mind, Ghazi is one of the most probably despicable liars that this show has ever covered. I yeah, mean, everything that guys comes out of the motherfucker's mouth is fake. But he says that, and Black Hammer as the organization, say that the police actually stormed the house, or, they, or sometimes they say the feds stormed the house, and they shot AP. Yeah, that does not seem to be what happened. No, not at all, not whatsoever. Um, it, it does appear that, that AP, I mean, for whatever reason, I have no idea the mental state of these people that were taken off the street and thrust into this insane dynamic of the Hammer House, uh, but that AP likely did kill himself. Um, I mean, Ghazi has, you know, in the aftermath of Hammer City, like you were saying, taken a very weird direction, not only with, like, recruiting just homeless people, but uh, he is, I don't know how to describe this, but he has practiced a, what you could call small C conservatism. Mm. He has become a, well, I don't even know if small C conservatism fits. He's just an out-and-out Republican. Well, yeah, I, d- I doubt that it's like actually ideological. Yeah, there's course. any kind of ideological base. I think he's just kind of seeing what is. It's like a shock jock and science trying to like see what can get the attention. Because like we talked about, he's like a clout demon. Yes. <laughs> and that that and has like many demons taken this to an insane, insane, horrible level. And now you know a couple kids are dead. I know that that's the thing is like. Ghazi, like, if you remember back to the beginning of Black, Black Hammer, is, is they really got their start, and they actually at first it all came into people's consciousness because Ghazi and Black Hammer made all these posts on various social media sites saying that Anne Frank is a Becky. Right. And Anne Frank, I thought it was Karen. I think this might have, no, it was definitely, it was Becky. Okay. Because I feel like Karen was very 2020, and I believe this was pre-2020. Okay. But it was definitely, it was Becky. Although I'm sure they called her a Karen at some point too. Okay. They, they, they said a lot of things about Anne Frank. Yeah. Um, but you Here's know, they, my thing. I don't think anyone needs to say anything about Anne Frank. Yeah. I mean, she kind of, she let got the sleeping to dog say about lie. Anne Frank. You should just maybe, you know. You're, listen, if you're, you're thinking, an about. if you're thinking day to day about Anne Frank. Yeah. You are lost in the sauce. Absolutely. There's, you are, there's, bro. Yeah, absolutely. You got your shit fucked up. Yeah. Um, and his shit's fucked up. Yeah. You know, they, uh, you know, they, after Hammer City, which they raised $120,000 for in Colorado, fell through. And by fell through, I mean they did not actually purchase the land that they yeah, said they were going to purchase. But they kept purchase. the money. They did keep the money and they were escorted off the land by the sheriff's department. They moved to Atlanta, where they presumably used that money to rent a series of large houses and subdivisions. Yes. Um, there they enacted something called Operation Storm of White Tears, which I believe we covered in the last episode. Yeah. But basically their first thing that they did in Atlanta was essentially try to kick PSL out of the city. Yeah. So what they would do, they would call PSL racist. PSL, for those who don't know, is a American, uh, one of the bigger like uh, communist parties, I guess, still not very big, uh, you know, Marciite party. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, they had a presence in Atlanta, and Black Hammer would follow them around. At, they'd have, like, little, you know, Cuba protests and stuff. Yeah. This was, I believe, during, like, the, the last time there was sort of flare-up of tensions. Um, and uh, maybe it was during the protests or something. Black Hammer would go to their protests and protest them. Yes. And, like, chase them around, call them racist, call them colonizers. Just wreck crazy shit. Totally. Totally. Um, eventually, they start live streaming their house meetings, which is, you know, yeah. was referenced to me watching before, which I saw some pretty insane I scenes I believe that during. was on Twitch. Yes, it was on Twitch. But yeah, I mean, I did see somebody, I believe, fake a seizure and then have a real seizure on a uh, Black Hammer live stream while they filmed him. Uh, I heard someone say the words, land back, daddy-o. Mm-hmm. Um, I, it was, it were, and I would just be people like basically paraded in front of Ghazi while he would berate them, demote them, promote them in the most insane sort of skin crawling struggle sessions that you could ever imagine. So members actually start leaving the group during this period. Right. Sort of like right when we did the episode and a little bit after, I think it was like September of last year, there was a big kind of 
release of a bunch of testimonials and yeah. kind of like there was like a Google a Google Drive released of a bunch of ex members uh, and Twitter accounts kind of popping up, anonymous Twitter accounts saying like we need to get people out of Black Hammer. This yeah. is a cult. This is abusive. We need to kind of like get people focused on you know saving kids from this fucking clout demon. This very podcast actually, we 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 sent some money to a woman who was trying to and successfully got out of the Black Hammer. Yeah, house. absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, people were actually talking about like having to escape from the house. Yeah. Um, I mean, some of the stuff is like like in that in that Google Drive you're talking about. Some woman from Sierra Leone who says yeah. that she started this sort of Black Hammer chapter there. You know, a woman from Sierra Leone uh, with you know she was given five thousand dollars by Black Hammer, and because of the stuff that was like that came from the organization, because of them her, them jerking her around, she totally lost the trust of her community. You know, she was evicted from her apartment. Like, you know, th- this they fucked over a lot of people, not just in the U.S. That's awful. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, members in there talking about how Augustus, which is, by the way, that is, I don't think we've even said this, this that's Ghazi's real name. Augustus, yes. Yes, Augustus uses therapy and trauma bonding to manipulate members. As an example, he once had comrades come into a healing circle meeting to share their deepest, darkest secrets and most traumatic experiences. He later used everything from this meeting to berate and emotionally and mentally abuse members when they refused to bend to his will. Augustus also had fake therapy in Black Hammer Organization, wherein one of the, quote, therapists was reporting what was shared during the therapy sessions, presumed to be confidential, as all legitimate therapy is. Augustus, in turn, used this information to seem as if he was intuiting members' deepest emotions, desires, and insecurities, which he used to love bomb and ingratiate himself to or alternatively abuse and berate them. These members were then deluded to believe Augustus really knows them, when in reality he was breaching their privacy by spying on their therapy sessions. Like, if anyone knows anything about cults, blackmail, uh, Scientology, like anything that we've ever talked about on this show for the past, I don't know, how long have we done? Three years? Three years. This is like, wee, 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 wee. I mean, this is like, like... Fucking Jonestown shit, exactly. man. I mean, this is and this is exactly like I mean that came to mind when we were doing our yes, last episode. And we've like, been talking about this. This is going to end really badly. Yeah. You know, I, I I saw like during that big exodus of, of members, and in fact, even a little before we did that episode, they were doxing people who had left, yeah, like absolutely. posting their full addresses from all of their accounts. Uh, you know, they were calling people pedophiles that had left the organization. I know there was one person who had left who I believe worked in some capacity with kids that they were trying to get fired from their job by just baselessly claiming that they were a pedophile. I mean, everything like that was their entire like, you know, in that that Google drive, which we can actually we can link to that as well sure. um, if we remember. Um but, the, you know, in that, there's, like, all these text messages that people provide as evidence. Yeah. Like, with Gazi and Black Hammer members talking about, like, anyone leaves, we have to destroy their life. You know, I understand that a lot of people were under Gazi's spell, too. Like, I, you know, I, people being in cults and then doing what the cult leader says and then kind of leaving the cult, that's a complicated situation, Yeah, right? I mean, there's a reason why people talk about charisma and how powerful it can be and people being charismatic leaders. It's not because it's, like... Oh, it's something easy to just kind yeah. of walk away from, you know. Yeah. And when you have a kind of connection, it's very difficult to break. Yeah, and like it, it's it's. I mean, people really were under this guy's spell, and, and it sucks because I think a lot of these people. I would say most of these people, except maybe some of those in leadership positions, really genuinely believed that they like wanted a better world. Like they saw like you know racism, yeah. problems of you know injustice around them, and they're like they they so they viewed Black Hammer for whatever reason as the vehicle to at least, you know, solve or at least alleviate some of those problems. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's like you're taking advantage of people who, particularly through like 2020, 2021, and now in 2022, like are, you know, interested and passionate about, you know, possibly changing the world and, or, you know, trying to to find a community and do something. Yeah. And, you know, pursue different avenues of social justice and find like-minded people. It's like completely and totally preying upon that. Absolutely. Let alone now a bunch of kids who, for whatever reason, all of which I'm assuming are really bad, had to leave their like home situations. Yeah. You know, are homeless either, you know, 
bad family situations, bad work situations, bad whatever, abusive situations, like, on the street, taking advantage of that. I yeah. mean, it's just like, it's like fucking awful shit, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, the particularly insidious to me is them essentially preying on homeless people. You know what I mean? Huh. One thing that comes, you know, comes in some of the reporting on this is that they were, you know, they're, they're this park basically offering shelter to people that they like viewed. I mean, very likely that they they themselves viewed that they could manipulate or that they could control. But I'm sure with whatever promises, like you know, you seem together enough to come with us. Um, I mean, these people are like they're fucking they're vampires. Yeah, literally. Another part of Black Hammer's more recent behavior, too, is, is like we mentioned, their conservative term. Yeah. Uh, there was some, a lot of press, not a lot, but a minor amount of press that was written about their so-called alliance with the Proud Boys. <laughs> the Dime Square Hammer House. <laughs> yes. I'm going to be honest with you. It, it seems like a one-sided alliance. I don't, I don't believe there was an official statement right. from the Proud Boys. <laughs> I didn't, I'm going to be real. I did not know the Proud Boys like still... Existed. I was Hammer at Hammer. Were they at January six? If Black Hammer had been at January six, we would have. That known. would have gone to the from the best day of my life to yeah. the best day in human history. Yeah, totally. Uh, no, they were not. I believe me. You think it's there wouldn't kind be a of live crazy stream? That they it's it's honestly a big ball drop there. Yeah, that's crazy that Actually, they weren't. Very interesting. Very they interesting. There. Um, but they, I mean, such like a fucking caricature. I mean, they, 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 he went on Gavin Newsom show guys. He did to be like, we're fighting back against the demon crats. Like they, it's, they, they <laughs> hey, that's of, our word. Exactly. They, well, demon rats. Oh yeah. They were, um, they were sort of walking this weird line with COVID where they were both, they were, they both thought there weren't enough vaccines going mm. to the third world, but also the vaccines were poison. Uh, and, that's a difficult Circle yeah, it's a, it's a it's a hard one. Yeah. Not only that, but they're insane pro maskers, but now also publicly anti vaccine. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's, a little tough. I feel like I'm doing the the like gif of the the woman trying to figure out all the calculus. My whole thing is, if you can't please everyone, don't please anyone. I think it's trigonometry though. It's not yeah. calculus, is it? So, it's <laughs> you know, like many conservative warriors. Mm. Ghazi particularly hated Facebook.com. Mm. You and him share that passion. Well, we can talk about this after. What? Yes, I don't like Facebook, okay? Here's my I thing. Can't... If you got an opinion about Facebook, that, that's like the Anne Frank thing. No one needs to think about Facebook or have an opinion about Facebook. Just don't I be on Facebook. I think you can have an opinion on Anne Frank. I don't have an opinion on Facebook because I'm not on Facebook. I don't think about Facebook. You know who else isn't? Oh. So there so he flew to Facebook headquarters with three, I believe at least three other members to have a protest outside. Uh he loomered. He loomered. And this is and this is a classic thing. <laughs> He's loomering. And I gotta be honest, this is some advice I gotta give you. If you are going to the headquarters of a social media organization to hold a protest, check this out. You got to halt. Are you hungry, angry, lonely, or tired? And you got to think about those things before you make that decision. Because mm. maybe all you need to do is have a, like a... Get a little sandwich. Yeah, a little, maybe even just a cliff bar. Maybe you need to take a nap. Maybe you need yeah, to sort of take some deep breaths. Maybe you're a big old breaths. baby and you can't tell what you need. Exactly. Don't do that. It doesn't... You don't want to do that. So... They do do that. Yeah. And they have some really weird kind of stuff with them. Of course, this, of course, happened after uh, the beginning of the special operation in Ukraine. <laughs> and the supposed reason for the protest, according to their signs at least, but not necessarily to what he's saying, is to protest the censorship of Russian voices. Ah, uh. Stop silencing Russian voices. Stop silencing Russian I, voices. I love that everyone just uses that, by the exactly. way, that terminology. And <laughs> that was like the banning of RT, right? Yeah. And all that. Uh, uh, yeah. Or whatever. It was sort of unclear. I mean, but yes, I assume related to that. Yeah. One of them, I can't remember who it is. I watched the video, but one of them has like a Russian flag tied around his neck. Mm. Another one has a really wordy sign that has strangely worded, like, it's like, stop silencing Russian voices, stuff like that. But then like okay. more. Uh Met the meta logo also drawn out. 
which yeah. is actually the largest. It's, it's the part Here's of the post that pops the most. You're you're making a little poster for the protest. Yeah. Don't draw a company logo on the. It's just it never looks like what you think it's going to look like. You can't mimic it right because you're not a good at you're not good at drawing, and it's going to look messy. My thing with protest signs is this: there should be a federal law enacted, and in fact, a social contract made. Where you can only have one of two signs at a protest, and you have to pick which. You can either have an anarchy sign or a swastika. No, and that's, that's a horrible. It. No, idea. that's it. An anarchy sign with the with the line through the middle of the A. Like the too. classica one. No, the, the cla- yeah, like the classica. Because people sometimes try to be like it's just an A with a circle, but no, you got to do like the hot topic anarchy sign or like a crazy swastika. Wait, what's the difference? Wait, which is the anarchy one and which is the Avengers logo? They are the same logo. They are right. Yes. That's weird. Well, there's only so many things you do with an A. Yeah. Um, if I was an anarchist and a conspiracy theorist, I'd sue Marvel. I would be like, I'd be like, here, this is, you know, big, big Marvel doesn't want, you know, anarchy. I prefer little Marvel. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. You might be wondering, like, wow, that's they they flew to California from Atlanta to do that. Yeah. Well, that's actually where the second part of Black Hammer's trouble really begins. Yeah. So on July 29th, just 10 days after the SWAT team shows up in Fayetteville, DOJ, aka the Feds, put out a press release with attached indictment. Against Alexander Ionov. Yonov. Yon. You know what? Here's the thing. It's a name. No, Pronounce Yonov. It how- it's Yonov. Pronounce it however you want. Is it Yonov? Yonov. I like Ionov. Let's do Ionov. Okay, Yonov. It might be Ionov. Wait, you don't know? I'm just gaslighting. Oh my god. What? Let me gaslight a little. Don't be such. A- don't be so fucking crazy about this. <laughs> okay. Alexander. Let's go with what I said, Ionov. Uh, that's. <laughs> no, let's just go with Ionov. No, no, so Alexander Ionov. Alexander Ionov. Okay, this guy is a, we're going to call him Alex, a Russian national who they said the government, aka the feds, say is an FSB, aka the feds of Russia agent. They accuse him, Mr. Alex, of interfering in American elections, which is my classico favorite federal allegation. You might be thinking like, wow, did he cast some uh, hanging chads in Arizona yeah. for Joseph Biden? Did he put his finger on the, well, I guess it wouldn't be for Biden, but did he put his finger on the scale somewhere in Florida? Not exactly. No, no, he, this is what the indictment claims. There's two FSB agents, FSB agent one and two, two, who coordinate with Mr. Alex and report to an unnamed but capitalized Russian official. So the indictment claims that ever since 2013, which is just after Ionov graduated college, he has been working with the FSB in order to facilitate contact with minority groups and parties in other countries. The DOJ claims that Mr. Alexander Ionov has been monitoring these groups for the FSB, reporting their activities, and passing them money. Much of the information about Ionov's relationship with the FSB comes from what uh, the government is calling intercepted emails, which actually we can't see, but a grand jury has apparently seen. Mm. Um, and by the way, Intercepted means we're talking about hacked emails. Yeah. So one of the groups that is, there's three groups that are basically referred to in the indictment. Those groups are not named anywhere in the indictment. And there's individuals as well. The individuals are named as unindicted co-conspirators. Yes. Our favorite phrase on this entire podcast. Yes. Um, So Mr. Alex Ionov is working, basically infiltrating, uh, trying to sway three unnamed political groups in the U.S. on behalf, the DOJ claims, of the Russian government. Yes, correct. It does not take a whole lot of detective work in order to figure out who the groups that are referred to in this indictment are. So the first group, 
and, and really the one that the bulk of the indictment about, is about, is the African People's Socialist Party, which is often called the Uhuru Movement. So the chairman, Omali Eshetia, is famous for being on the beginning of uh, the a Dead Prez song. Uh, I, we can actually insert it right here. You have the emergence in human society of this thing that's called the state. What is the state? Uh, Dead Prez were actually an APSP-affiliated rap group. Uh, yes. I don't know if they are anymore. Who released one of the worst songs I've ever heard, which is called Mind Sex. It's time for some mind sex. We ain't got to take our clothes off yet. Uh, as deep, but... <laughs> You know, although I will give a props for that's cool that they were in a Huru rap group. Oh my god, you look um, like you got a backpack on right now. No, I'm conscious rapper. You know, you you guys fucking know that I did. That. I was part of that whole thing. Right? They should bring back backpack rap. I think it's still around. Is it? Yeah, I think that's what logic is. I don't know though. Okay. I Frank, I I'm gonna be real with you. I don't know, but I think that's what. But like, it is. as a guy, like I feel like the guy of the the, the backpack rapper guy atmosphere. Is, yeah, what happened to was, Atmosphere? Uh, yeah, I, you don't know what happened? <laughs> he died in, in Bonaclan. Okay, let's keep it going. Um, as detailed in our previous episode, uh, Ghazi was actually once a member of the African People's Socialist Party. Yes. Uh, but he was kicked out before starting Black Hammer, and he actually had a very bad relationship with APSP after yeah. his, his booting out. And actually, my friend Saddam uh, once ended... Yes. Just a random wrong, name. Yeah, well, it's a common name in some parts of the world. All right. Uh, who's from Africa. Uh, once attended their reparations march in Oakland mm. and uh, just asked the members for money, and he, he came away with $45. Wow. Yeah. So this was all the white people that they had marching uh, in order for to get reparations. So the U.S. government alleges that the FSB was using the African People's Socialist Party via Ionov to disrupt elections and run candidates with Russian government money. They had also, the government, the DOJ claims, paid for APSP members to travel to Russia. Mm. So Uhuru isn't exactly the biggest movement in the world. In terms of like what, what people like to call movement politics, mm -hmm. you wouldn't classify it up there, although it is definitely the biggest of the three groups we're talking about in this indictment. Absolutely. Mo yeah, it's it's not very it's not very big. Most of their startup money came from a white woman, mm. which you know, frankly, me too. Uh, and they do run actually some some I gotta say very well reviewed and they look like good furniture stores. <laughs> I think they're pretty like in, in certain like smaller locations they're pretty like well integrated into like local politics. Yes, but it's a very like yeah localized uh, phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, it's not like a big. You don't like run into them. National movement. Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. They, they, they claim to have branches in a lot of places. I'm sure there's members in different yeah. cities and stuff, but they're, they're not like, they're not a major presence on the political scene no. outside of the cities which they have headquarters in, uh, which is, I think, Florida and St. Louis, um, or a city in Florida, which I can't remember which, in, in St. Louis. Um, nevertheless, the FBI actually raided the APSP headquarters. And, and a bunch of members' homes, including 80-year-old Omali Yeshitia's house mm. with flashbangs, I think tear gas in one case, fucking guns drawn, APCs. So it's so insane. Yeah. Herded them out into the street uh, and then just took all of their electronic devices and, uh, Chairman Yeshitia says, about 40 years' worth of paper records as well. So they basically have just taken everything from this group. Um <laughs> The actual, like, what they're talking about, and by the way, nobody has been charged here. They're still unindicted. I mean, they say they expect indictments to come down. The, this is what APSP says. But, like, no one's actually been indicted yet. They're saying that they, uh, essentially, they had run candidates before. They did, like, a U.S. tour. I think it was, like, We Charge Genocide. I can't remember the name of it was. Mm. I believe it was that. Um, and they claim that that was funded by Ionov. Ionov. Mr. Alexander. Um, and so because of that, I think so, to, particularly because of running for office, it's, I don't know, I don't, that thing is like, I'm like, is that actually illegal to like take money from just a guy in Russia to go on tour? 
I mean, I think it's illegal to take money from a foreign national in order to run for office in some cases or most cases, but I don't think it's illegal to like go on a road trip. I mean, do you think that they knew that they were taking this? Like that they knew that this was where this stuff was coming from or what's your read? My read on this is if you are flown to Russia or really any country by a guy and participate in a conference. Yeah. You should know what's up. Just like, Let's put maybe two and they two just together. didn't put two and two together. Right. But like, you know, these were not major, like, you know, APSP actually has pretty major sources of income. Mm. And the amount of money we're talking here is like fairly trivial, all things considered. Like these are, this is like a few thousand dollars here and there. This is not exactly like, right. he's not giving them like $10 million. Right. Right. I mean, it's like they, they were flown to participate in some like large conference with like, you know, groups from like Transnistria. And mm, I think Sin, Sin Fine was there. Sure. And like some other, you know, it basically like minority groups from, from different countries. Right. As part of uh, Yanov's project, the uh, anti globalization movement. But it in all is like very like small potatoes. Yes. Yeah. Which is what Super makes the small whole thing potatoes. kind of uh, like more strange. I mean, the other group that's named, that kind of like, you know, a couple people put together, a couple journalists put together. Um, in the indictment is a group that we actually know pretty well called Yes California, which yes. is just two guys. Liz, do not sell them short. They were two guys and one woman. Oh, sorry about that. And then one that. woman decided that she didn't want to do it anymore. Oh. And that she was too good for it. And that maybe she'd start a podcast. And she left behind oh, the movement. And she has actually never even had one of these guys on the show, even though they all lived in the same state and believed in the same thing. Oh, my God. Sorry, that's a statement from one of the founders. Well, she sounds very cool. So, <laughs> Liz, you, you have been harping on California secessionists I fucking hate while. these people. Yeah, you Yes, California them? is a California secessionist group. So that's what kind of got a big headline with this because it was like, oh, my God, like the Russiagate people yeah. were like, oh, FSB money funding secession group, Russia trying to stoke U.S. Civil War too, which I'm assuming that's what they're calling this, that. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, because yeah. you can't call it the Civil War. No, no. I mean, it would just be the other Civil War. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, California is, like Liz said, basically just two guys the more prominent of which is a man named Louis J. Marinelli. Fake name. From Buffalo, New York. That's where my dad was born. He hasn't even lived in California. Like, this guy's lived in California, I'll say this, on and off. He mostly spends his time in Russia where he lives. What's a guy from New York want California to leave for? I'm like, do, Cal- that? New, do New York secession. What do you, what, what are do you, you doing? Like, you like... You you don't like food? You don't like water? You don't like movies? Why do you want California to leave? Well, I think he... Wait, do you think that he lived somewhere else and he wanted to kick California out of the but he union? he doesn't even live in California. <laughs> well, he lived in California during some... He Liz? should say yes, California, to himself. Yes, I know. And that's the thing. So he, he actually tried to put a ballot initiative in California, because you can do that in the state, that would change the title of governor of California to president of California. He's, he's trying to do a bunch of ballot measures. I think almost all of them has definitely failed if they did get on the ballot. I think most of them actually failed to get on the ballot in the first place. Uh, he opened up a embassy for California in Ugh, Moscow. I hate him so much. Which, if I had to guess, was staffed by Louis J. Mar- Marinelli. Would be so funny for the Russians to be like, we recognize the California <laughs> Absolutely. embassy. Absolutely. I know that would be incredible. <laughs> Um, but you know, here's the thing. This is why I don't like, I, this is what makes me so mad. This was not a thing. And we had to deal with these like annoying flyers everywhere and stickers everywhere. Yes. Yes. California. Yes. Secede. Blah, blah, blah. And then every dumbass was like, oh, this is a thing that we need to take seriously. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's fake. It's two guys. One, they don't even live in California. They live in Buffalo or whatever. Yeah. And it's like. It's not a thing. It's not this a thing. is not a thing. It's two guys. Nobody wants to do this. No yeah, one wants every, to do this. Every time there's an election, a statewide election in California, some of the dumbest people in a large state full of, I got to say, very stupid motherfuckers 
are like get together, put some press release together, yes. and then people have to pretend to take this seriously. This is the stu- this is what California politics are so stupid yeah. because that is all baked into the politics. Anyone can do anything in California. Yeah. Actually, that's why I like it, but yes. But that's why every kooky, crazy thing is always happening. Yeah. And people who are not from the state, like Louis J. Marinelli and his partner, I'm assuming. Yeah. Because there's only two people no, in this. No, it's a guy. They just take it seriously. Yeah. Like, these are, you know, these are. this is a movement. You can't move to California and then do a ballot measure in California to secede from America. Yeah, that's, that's fake stuff. But anyway, th- you know, look, the Russian, Mr. Alex... He's also taking it seriously because he's given them money. He gave them about five hundred dollars, I okay, believe, to well, stage a single a protest in front of the Capitol building, which there are pictures of, and there appear to be around eight people at. Here's the thing: if five hundred dollars can fund anything for your movement, yes, your movement is too small. Yes, that buys you about uh, two thirds of an AK-47. Yeah, you're not gonna. You're definitely not drawing good logos with with that amount of money. You know, Liz, I'm actually surprised that you dislike this guy. Do you want me to tell you why? Because I will. Okay, you've got a point here. He has a substack. <laughs> and I would like you to read I don't know why you this think- italicized paragraph from the substack that I've put in the notes here. Oh my God. This is from Louis J. from the desk of Louis J. Marinelli. Do you think he's a Louis or a Louis? I don't know. I'm just switching between them. Okay. As much as I would love to see California no longer part of the United States, allowing it to secede would only allow its left-wing ideology to further metastasize and kill whatever remains golden about the golden state capitalized. Independence would unbind California from the only thing that has thus far, thus far, kept it from completely deteriorating into a third-world communist state. That one thing is the United States Constitution. At the end of that statement, he announced that his family was moving to Arkansas. Classic Substack announcement. Exactly. (laughs) So this guy, so this is to be clear here. The DOJ is accusing Mr. Ionov. Mr. Alexander. Ionov of funding Yes California, these California secessionists who not only didn't really live in California for most of the time that they had their little group, yeah. but who now are announcing on Substack that they're one of the, the founder and really the main guy is leaving California for Arkansas. Yeah, he's a personal secession. Exactly. So finally, that brings us to Black Hammer. Yeah, because if you haven't figured out, that's the third unnamed organization that Mr. Alexander was funding. So their relationship, uh, and this is something that 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 uh, that Charlie pointed out to me when we did our last episode. We actually went through the Facebook, like you know, the connections, all this stuff. Uh, both Gazi and Alexander are very active on Facebook, mm. um, and they've sort of been singing each other's praises for a while. Uh, you know, Gazi will shout out Mr. Ionov, Mr. Ionov will do the same to Gazi. Um, and their relationship seems to, I mean, listen, I'm going to tell you this straight. Fellas, if you're on the internet, if particularly on Facebook, but really any social media platform, and you're talking to a strange, alluring stranger from the Far East, don't do it. Mm. Something, something's going on there. You know? In fact, don't talk to any strangers. But uh, so the, the document alleges that Alexander Ionov sent Ghazi and a few of his uh, little cadre of friends. A.K.A. unindicted co-conspirator number five, mm-hmm. by the way. To Facebook headquarters after the Russian special operation started to protest censorship of Russian voices. Sure enough, there's footage of this event, which we talked about earlier. Uh, and in fact... The, the part that I actually, I think it mentioned this in the indictment. It says that he actually designed their signs. I think what they mean by that is that Ionov posted a meme, which was obviously made in like, I don't know, MS Paint or something like that. But, you know, like a, like a digital piece of writing with like, you know, stop censorship of Russian voices. And that Black Hammer drew it with marker onto a placard and held that during their protest. Oh, my God. Again with the markers. I know. Um, you know, the, the actual video is like Ghazi talking about they're on stolen land. He says that Facebook's pointing guns at them. He pans the camera around, though, and there's no one Absolutely there. Absolutely nobody. Zero people there. Yeah. And he says they're concealed carrying, but they have the guns. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> I got to say, the fact that this came out, 
like a week and a half after Ghazi's trip to jail, one does have to wonder. Obviously, you know, this is, there's obvi- a lot of work goes into these indictments. You're saying that it might be related to the raid on Mar-a-Lago. Yes. <laughs> So what I'm saying here is the FBI has become <laughs> politicized and they're trying to take down conservative contenders <laughs> to Joe Biden's reign in the White House, the regime in the White House. No, but I mean, the FBI is obviously very political. That, that, but yeah. I think in this case, Ghazi maybe flipped. Oh, you think, you think that that, because of the timing. I, you know, I'm usually not one to be like, you know, with based on zero information, be like, this guy has turned state's evidence. But with Ghazi's- You love rep- saying that. I love saying state's evidence. You love saying I it. love saying state's evidence because I've turned it. Yeah. I've tried to turn it. I've tried to rat That's on- That's your move. This guy sold me a 20 <laughs> bag of cocaine. <laughs> Please arrest him, officer. That's your move with the ladies. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> Turning state's evidence. That's your move. What what is that? What would that mean? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies, it's true. I do do that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm saying that uh, it's notable that APSP had their whole shit raided, everything stolen, and the Hammer guys, excluding of course the two members that are in jail, uh, have county seemingly jail, by the way. county jail not have seemingly just jail. been walking around free and clear, have not had their devices confiscated, etc. Right. So. One does wonder if this is, I mean. Well, that's the thing, too, is that, like, Mr. Alexander, Mr. Ionov, Mr. Yunov, whatever, you know, this is a small potato guy, right? We're talking $500 here, $10,000 there, maybe $5,000 over here to three organizations that literally are not, like, no one could in any, like, actual way call them. Like legit, like big political organization. They're not big political no. movement organizations. I mean, APSP is by far the largest, and that's like not a large organization. Yeah, they're not like yeah. So this is it's like small potatoes. Yeah, and the thing is, like, I think I saw a knee jerk reaction from some people because I'm all you know I'm up on Black Hammer News. Yeah, and sure. so when this dropped, it's I, great search on Twitter. By well, the way. Well, you'll see a lot of penises. Um, when this dropped, I was kind of looking around to what people were saying, and there was a lot of sort of skepticism, which I get, right? Like, I do think that the raid against APSP is political, you know? I yeah. don't think that the FBI views APSP as like a threat or No, anything. no, and it's clearly like way out of proportion. Uh, absolutely. Which as is, the FBI, you know, that's their, that's that's their move. That's what they want to do. And like strongly condemn that, right? I do think, though, that like, first of all, I think that maybe Ghazi's trying to save his own ass and would throw Ayanov under the bus. But what it looks like to me is I do, I do think, I do believe this. I, I, I'll be frank with you. Like from Ayanov's history and from what he does in his um, political and economic life, I would, I mean, absolutely. I think the guy probably works for the FSB, mm. right? Uh he is one of the younger people that you would encounter in these realms. You know, he's only 30 years old. Um, he's well connected with a lot of sort of global movements. And what it looks like might have happened here. And, you know, I don't want to diss Alex because I've talked to him a little bit. Yeah. You know, I think of us as not, if not friends, you know, uh, people that have talked. You're in, you're in the DMs. We're in the talking stage. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think what he probably was, he was like, went to a superior, went to some guy, and was just like, listen, I'm in contact with this large black dissident organization. In fact, a couple of large black dissident organizations in the U.S. And two guys from Buffalo. And to these two guys from, from fucking Buffalo who are going to get California to secede. I need some money to maybe yeah. do some palms here. And so it looks like, you know, it, to understand <laughs> Alex is you actually have to look at his Instagram or his Facebook and realize – this is not a man who is of the mold that many political people you might be used to are from. This is a rise and grind guy. Oh, sure. One day he might be hanging out with, uh, you know, Nicholas Maduro. The next day, he's in front of a Maybach. He's seven feet tall. He wears chains. He wears fur. He's got a full Venezuela flag sweatsuit. He's in Iran. He's in Syria. He's met with Assad like 40 times. I don't know what his job is. He's a, quote, trade consultant. And you know what that's codenamed for? A hustler. Rise and grind, baby. And so what he, I think Ayanov's doing here is I think he's hustling his way up into the FSB. Yeah. That makes it, sense to me. I mean, and you know what? 
That's funny. <laughs> I don't care who you are. That's funny. So the Fed raid, that happened 10 days after the, you know, SWAT team descended upon the Fayetteville Hammer compound. Hammer mm-hmm. House? Let's call it a compound. Compound. And it's a shame because, I mean, the, 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 the news from the federal indictment got a lot more attention. Or kind of like the attention of that kind of usurped the attention that was being paid to. Yeah. Like the tragedy in Fayetteville with these kids and what's going on there. And it's a shame because... The like we said, like the stuff with the FSB is very funny and very weird. Yeah, and it's a lot of funny characters, you know, Gazi included. But like, no one then is really paying attention to. I mean, Hammer's still going. Yep, they're trying to get Gazi out. Yep, they're soliciting donations based on it, mm-hmm. and a bunch of kids are still fucking caught up in this like insane clout political. Cult. There's still six or seven, at least in Atlanta, maybe eight, still in Atlanta, still going around to these parks, talking to homeless people, trying to get them to, I don't know if they still have the house or not, no. um, but there's still basically people trapped in this cult. And like, the fact of the matter is, is like, it does look like fucking several people participate into like a pretty major crime of like holding someone at gunpoint while Ghazi fucking raped them. I mean, this is like, that's the thing is like, Black Hammer so... It's almost difficult to talk about because it's very goofy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you have Ghazi dressing up like the Joker or like, right. you know, saying all these sort of like, he's, I mean, he's an incredibly charismatic talker. Yeah. Doing all the musical theater bits. Exactly. And stuff. Very, very theater, dark theater kid, like evil fucking, you know, stageman, uh, showman rather. Uh, but at, on the other end of that, like, there is a room where Ghazi Kodo is fucking anally raping somebody at gunpoint. And it's like, this is, it does not take a genius to see where the, that this is where this is going to end up. I am, and I'm, and this sounds so fucking fake, but like, I am genuinely grateful that there isn't like a larger loss of life yeah. that happened here. So it's very much like, I, I actually legitimately thought, and I've sort of just placed it in the back of my mind that like someday this will end up with like a standoff, you know? Mm. And like, Ghazi will have... I don't know, in, in one last ditch Hail Mary clout effort decided to live stream a shootout with the police or something. Um, but, you know, it's it's more mundane, more banal than that. It's a suicide um, of a homeless person that they, they, they got off the street and barraged with these, you know, fucking diet caffeine-free MK Ultra activities or whatever. And uh, And then you have this kind of goofy indictment that came after. I know, it's a tra- it's a, it's both tragedy and farce at the same time. Ugh, well, I hope this is the last Black Hammer episode we do. I do too, although I will say this is not the last uh, I hope we hear of Mr. Ayadov. Yeah. Because I got to say, it sounds like we're talking shit on him. We're not. I'm not calling you a small fry. He's literally seven feet tall. Yeah, he can't be a small fry. But also, please let us know how to say your name. Yes. If yes. nothing else. Also, yeah, please, like, he, I will, he hasn't read my last messages to him, mm. but if you want to come on the show. Sure. By all means, please come on the show. Yeah. Um, and so we'll leave it at that. Open invitation to Mr. Alexander I. I'm Liz. My name is Brace, and of course, we have with us producer Young Chomsky, and this show is a publicly funded show by the Russian government that is called True Anon. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Jeffrey Epstein. Come here. Come here.